this is an important video and I sacrificed a lot of plants for this so no skipping around pay attention if you don't have this basic understanding of lighting you probably fail at growing indoors outdoors traditional hydroponics whatever this is important now someone in our Facebook group posted this picture and they said help and at first glance, I thought, you probably don't have enough lights. And then he posted this picture, which kind of confirmed it. Now it's understandable because I've made this mistake too. And I think that lighting could be one of the most misunderstood concepts of growing and probably one of the most underestimated aspects of it. See, lighting is really important. A lot more than some of us care to think about. Now I get a lot of questions about lighting you know, what's the perfect grow light? So they think there's a silver bullet. Like I might go ahead and say this link is down in the description, which it's not, I'm not gonna do that to you. And, and tell you this is the best light and you think you're gonna go and buy it and you're gonna have the same results as me. And some of you might and some of you might not. There's a lot of different environments. We're all growing different things. We're growing in different temperatures. We're growing in different humidities. There's, there's so many different things that can go into it. So we're gonna break things down and we're gonna talk about the basics so that you have a basic understanding because there's a lot of information out there and there's a lot of people doing reviews on lights and telling you this is the best one, that's the best one. Um, it tends to be a little overwhelming and of course every person is gonna say that their light's the best and you need this and of course it works, right? And I've seen a lot of things that didn't work. So I don't want that to happen to you. One thing, let's understand what light actually means to a plant. This is not a bottle of sunshine. You know, it's nutrients. And I get a lot of people asking about the nutrients. They're real worried about nutrients, E, e C, P, H. And, and lots of them, you know, worry about that so much and they overlook how much lighting they have. Now, think about the nutrients as vitamins, okay? And think about the lighting that the plants need. That's their food, right? Now, if you didn't eat any vitamins or minerals, but you just ate potato chips. Technically, you could survive, right? But what's your quality of life gonna be? Same thing with a plant. But if you didn't eat food, and you just ate a vitamin every day, you probably wouldn't last that long. Same thing with your plants. So your plants need the light. So think of the nutrients as the vitamins and minerals that the plants need to photosynthesize to actually make the food in that too. So there's a, a lot of other things that they need it for, but the one basic thing is that your plants really do need the light and it's really important. So we're gonna have to talk about the plants outside before we can talk about the plants inside because that's where plants have been for hundreds of thousands of years, maybe millions of years, who knows, you know, in the sun too. Electricity has only been around a couple hundred years, right? So people didn't have grow lights, but people have been growing and gardening. And the sun has been what's been providing this light for all these years and centuries and centuries and that, right? Up until recently. So outdoors, I did a little experiment. We planted out a whole bunch of pak choy. When I planted those out, I planted out way more than I needed because uh, I wanted to emphasize this point. I've showed you guys a couple times before where I put some plants close together and one was in the shade. You know, not on purpose, it's just that one was in the sunlight and one was in the shade and that the one in the sunlight grew a lot better. You know, but if it got too much sun, you know, in this heat, it's like 90 something degrees. It was, at midnight, it was 92 degrees last night. It's crazy. If it gets too much heat, you know, they're gonna suffer. So you've got a little balancing act and that's what you've got to experiment with. Just think your plants, you know, if it says full sun, they get as much light as they can stand, but you also have to balance during the summer the amount of heat and stress that your plants are gonna take. So I've got a shade house, and I know that the plants will grow here during the summer. Uh, they're not gonna grow as fast, and it's not gonna be like a spring crop or a fall crop, but I still get a bunch of baby greens, and I enjoy that. I enjoy having greens all year round. So when I planted these out, I put some on the top. Usually we use the bottom shelf to plan out our planters and then we move them to the top shelf that way they're up out of the way they're up there they get the filter sunlight we have shade cloth it's 50% shade cloth and it lets some of the sunlight through now 
the bottom shelf that we usually use as a workstation, I'm going to leave a bunch of the planters down there. Now these on the bottom are going to be shaded by the ones on the top. So the only light they're going to get is like indirect light that's bouncing around, right? Probably like 10% or less of the natural light. Now we came back in a couple of weeks and you can see the ones on the top that are getting the shade are doing quite fine. They're at the baby green stage. We can already start harvesting them and, and start eating them and, and still let them grow for another couple of weeks. Now the ones on the bottom you can see aren't doing as well. Now I didn't move these around and I wanted you guys to see that you know as the sun comes and moves through here there were still some on the bottom that got a little bit of sun and there were some that got like no sun at all and you can see that right here that the ones on the end that got a little bit of sun started to grow so they started getting a little bigger and then the ones that got no sun just really suffered just like this long one here the one out on the end that's sticking out beyond the shade house it started to grow a little but it's still getting shade from the ones on the top so it didn't grow too well and all the ones underneath are doing really bad so I took that one and I'm gonna put it out on a table that's only about 15 feet away and I know that this table gets morning Sun afternoon shade when I say afternoon shade I don't mean like the shade from the house or something solid that's like gonna give it total shade I'm talking about all these trees it gets filtered sunlight even though it's getting shade and it's blocking it and it keeps the temperature down, sunlight still comes through there. So it's still getting some filtered light. And in a couple of weeks, this is what they look like. And you can see, compared to the ones at the shade house, they're actually doing better. So they started out doing worse than the ones in the shade house. Brought them out here and they're doing better than the ones in the shade house. And these things are only 15 feet away from where they started. Now I do a lot of experimenting like this and you might have to do this at your house too. You have to find out for yourself. I, it's easy to come onto these platforms and stuff and just ask people for questions and expect them to spit out an answer and it's gonna make everything all right. And too many of you do that and you try it and, and you mess up or you, you say they don't know what they're talking about or, or I can't do it and then you just quit. Gardening is something that everybody's got to experiment with. So besides this pop choy, I do this. Over the years, you'll see something like my ladder system. You've seen it in different spots, like this wall here. I had it there for one crop, and I noticed that it wasn't getting enough of the morning sun. So I moved it over to this spot on the same wall. Then I moved it to this wall, and we actually have our metal ladder system up there right now they had the kale uh, the one we built from the EMT pipe from uh, maker pipe the connections so that one's sitting there right now you've also seen it by my back door by our kitchen and when we built our shade house which is the dark rectangle down there in the bottom left corner I actually put it on the side of the shade house one time and it's in its current position at the front of our house in our driveway so our carport when we can pull it up it's right there where we can see it now that's six different spots and that's not even where it started we actually started it right here on this wall so this thing's moved around seven times since I built it and since we've been putting out videos and I found out that plants do better in in different areas and do you think it's because the weather is different on one wall than the next wall and in the front or back of my house or the temperature is that much different or the pH or the EC or anything is different no it's the amount of Sun that these get it's this time that they get the Sun and you might have to do this like I said you can see each one of these spots are not that far apart and just like our long downspout that we moved only 15 feet and you can see the difference that it made how much better and how much faster it grew just get moved that far you may have to do it too so that's why I love the downspouts and they're they're easy to move you can grow a lot of food in them and if something's not right you can pick it up and move it the shade house has a shelf up on the top and I used to put my pak choy up there spring it does fine but then I had one that was growing during the spring started turning the summer and it just got total Sun all through the day and the heat just wrecked it so I knew that it wasn't going to do good up there so I can't leave it there all year long 
So that's why it's not up there now. But I know that, you know, during the spring or fall, I can put it back up there and, and grow a crop. So gardening is all about like adapting and everything. If some of you might have a garden where you know things work right and, and you've done it. You might have dug it up the first time and, and had success and, and that was good luck. So that's great. You know, you did your homework and you looked and you watched how much sun it got and you looked at the plants and, and picked the right kind of plants. But some people just have to experiment to figure a lot of these things out. So that takes us to indoors, right? Now, when you go to get grow lights, like I said, there's no silver bullet. I can't sit here and tell you this is the best grow light. You have to find out for yourself how much are you growing. Plants need about 2,000 to 3,000 lumens per square foot. So if you're over there and you look at a light and I'm growing microgreens, I had two of these on a rack and they did fine. But now if I filled up this whole room with plants and I stuck this light way back up here in the corner and turned it on, you know, am I going to kid myself and think that that's enough light for all of those plants? So you've got to figure out how much you need. And the basic understanding you need to have is that you are trying to replace the sun. So LEDs are great right now because they don't use as much energy. They put out a lot of light and they don't heat up as much. But you guys have got to learn for yourself when there's a lot of people out there, uh, lots of people doing video. Believe me, I get on a weekly basis, I get people asking me to review grow lights. And how many grow light reviews have you seen me do? You know, I just uh, showed you the one that I use. And I use Brad's uh, from Hidden Harvest. You know, he doesn't make those anymore. But I don't do a lot of them. But I, I could be on here every week and review a different grow light. That's how many offers I get in the mail, email. Um, but I don't do it because all of them aren't going to work. When you go looking out, just remember, you're trying to replace the sun. The more you can do, the better. You know, I try to teach people the easy way. You know, how to use like recycled containers. You know, get your, nutrition, your nutrients in bulk so that you can get a cheaper price using microgreens and instead of buying a bunch of transplants that cost a lot of money you know there, there's different ways to save money but when it comes to growing indoors and lighting usually the more you can spend the better no manufacturer out there is going to make the best grow light and make it at the cheapest price so you know i wish that there was an easier answer than that but if you're going to grow indoors and you don't have any natural light you're going to need to put a bunch of light in there so I hope that helps. Like I said, I'm not going to sit here and, and tell you about lumens and, and the spectrum and, and all this other stuff because I'm on a quest to be the world's dumbest gardener. And I figure that I don't know all of that stuff. I know what I can grow. And if all of you know at least what I know, you can do at least that, there won't be anyone hungry out there. So learn what I know, practice it, then go out and learn more. I want everyone to be smarter than me when it comes to gardening. Alrighty, get out there, lift, inspire, keep on growing, be the change. We'll catch you next time.